This video shows some magnetic pins that I created for use with the honeycomb bed of my laser engraving and cutting devices. It also shows how I use magnets to hold down some work pieces. Then we'll see the parts and assembly technique for creating the pins. I use magnets a lot in my studio and in my shop. I specifically ordered the honeycomb bed from Xtool for my D1 laser because the honeycomb is steel, not aluminum, and works with magnets. These pins work equally well with expanded metal work surfaces. Here you can see the honeycomb bed installed in an Xtool D1 laser, as well as a close-up of one of the pins. Now let's watch Lauren insert a couple of pins into the honeycomb. The nice thing is we can insert as few or as many pins as we need in any positions appropriate for our workpiece. This is a piece of 1 8 inch Baltic birch plywood. And as you can see, it's not totally flat and it wobbles a little on the pins. So we're going to use some bar magnets with some thin steel mending plates that are available at most hardware stores to secure it. In some cases, she'll position the magnet first and then attach the mending plate on top. And other times she can just leave a mending plate attached to the magnet and set them in place as a unit. What I like about this is there's very minimal surface of the mending plate touching the edges of the workpiece. Also, you can see that you have a lot of flexibility in the placement of the mending plates and using as little or as much of the plates as you need to secure the piece. And the mending plates are thin enough so that it does not interfere with the movement of the laser at all. One of the reasons I like using pins to support the workpiece is that when doing cuts, there's an increased airflow beneath the workpiece. One way you know you're cutting through is that there's a considerable amount of smoke that is generated and you can see the smoke rising from underneath the workpiece. Also, very often the cut piece will drop out of the original material so that you know you've cut through it completely. And even if some pieces are fully cut but don't immediately drop through, you can generally gently poke them through without moving the workpiece. So if you find some that have not cut through, you can likely make another pass with the laser because the workpiece has not been moved. Raising the workpiece like this and using an air assist on the laser head makes for very clean cuts with very little, if any, charring on the front and back side of the workpiece. As mentioned, if you don't have a honeycomb bed, you might consider using one made from expanded metal. The magnetic pins just drop into the spaces in the expanded metal. Now let's take a close look at the pins, the parts, and the assembly technique. The supplies needed are some 1 quarter by 1 eighth inch ring magnets. These are rare earth magnets with an N42 rating. You'll also need some metric M3 by 8 millimeter panhead screws. The pins are 7 millimeter jewelry spikes. They're often used for leather work and other jewelry tasks. And finally, there are some number 8 steel washers. The tools for assembly are very simple. We have a small screwdriver and a pair of pliers. And because the tiny, strong magnets can get away from you very easily, we use a mending plate to help with the magnet wrangling. To make working with the magnets more manageable, Lauren slides each magnet off of the stack and onto the mending plate. Then she can insert the screws into the magnets. She then slides each piece off of the mending plate and onto a screwdriver. And the magnet holds the screw onto the screwdriver. Next she adds a washer, then twists on one of the jewelry spikes. She holds the spike with a pair of pliers to tighten up the assembly and then places the finished item onto another mending plate with the finished pins. I hope this gives you a few ideas about how to use magnets in your projects. Thanks for watching.